Hello and welcome to Connected. On this edition, the past and the future of live entertainment. Over the last four decades, Ipswich has played host to world-class entertainment at the Civic Centre. Well, now in its 40th year, we talk to Don Stewart, who is focused on giving the venue a new direction. This year also marks the 30th anniversary of the Queensland Performing Arts Complex and museum curator Christopher Smith takes a historical look back at more than 20,000 performances. And direct from the home of the Beatles, 20-year-old singer-songwriter Matt Breen showcases his style of indie music. It's time to raise the curtain on another edition of Connected. First, as we do each and every week, let's check out what's happening around South East Queensland with radio guru Greg Hinksy Hinks. How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Exceptionally well. What's happening? Now, what's the most death-defying thing that you've done? Ooh, uh, I would have to say being a passenger in your car. <laughs> really? Mine would be being on this TV show with you. Ah, fair enough. <laughs> well, why I say this is Adrenaline Cirque is coming to QPAC in January. Now, this isn't your ordinary Cirque. No, it's uh, not. I saw a show very similar to this a couple of years ago, and uh, they have the Wheel of Death. I know. Which I, sounds actually, rather unpleasant. I don't know what it's about. No, do you know, actually, the, the Wheel of Death, I've actually been inside. Of really? that, while you the motor survived. Look at and, you go. And look what happened to me. Yeah, you know, well. you used to have a you know chiselled jaw and look good, but you know, until the back tire clicked click me. But you know, <laughs> but the, the the big wheel. Um, that's not the wheel of death. No, that's the sphere. That's the different. Sphere. That's different. That's the sphere. And what they do is they actually have the motorbikes going around and around and around. Like yes. At one point, there's like three motorbikes in there. That's the and sphere. Yeah, the, the sphere, not the wheel of death. The wheel of death is actually like two wheels on a thing. I'm guessing here. I could be pulling this right out of somewhere unpleasant. And it goes around and people actually run around the outsides and, and insides and stuff. Oh, yes, I know that one. Yeah, that's the wheel. Yeah. The sphere is different because oh. they have the motorbikes going around. And then when you think, wow, that's pretty cool when they go upside down, it's like a Simpsons episode. Uh -huh. And then they have someone stand in the middle, like they, they bring a woman out and she stands in the middle and it goes through. It's pretty amazing and it's coming to uh, QPAC in January. So get tickets, qpac.com.au, because uh, it really is that uh, fantastic kind of stuff that uh, will make you go, oh, how did they do that? All right, and it uh, plays in January? Yes. All right, so At from QPAC. the 7th of January? Yes, that's it. All right, and what's some of the, do you know any of the other things they have in the show? Well, they generally have the trampolines and where they have like three or four different people doing, oh, yes. doing the displays and they've got the trapeze artists and they've got clowns, but they all take it to an extreme. Okay. So it's a, a, if you like your extreme sports, your motorbikes and, and that sort of thing, this is what you want to go and see and the Wheel of Death. Okay, we'll get into the Wheel of Death right here on Connected. Well, in 1975, Prime Minister Gough Whitlam officially opened the Ipswich Civic Centre. Now, at that time, the venue was largely seen as a community centre. However, it soon became a much-needed space for the performing arts. Forty years on, and Ipswich now hosts some of the best shows from across Australia and around the world. In this, their anniversary year, the centre also welcomes a new manager who now joins us on Connected. Don Stewart, welcome to the program. Great to be here, thank you. A new boy in Ipswich, I hear. Yes, most definitely, but uh, a Queenslander nonetheless. Right, so uh, what drew you to, to wanting to take on this role? Yeah, look, I think the opportunity to uh, you know, position the Ipswich Performing Centre and our arts community as a whole uh, on the map. You know, we, we've, gr we've worked very hard to grow our reputation as a quality venue, providing quality shows. And, uh, you know, I just think uh, I wanted to be a part of that. Um, yeah. It's an exciting journey that we've got ahead of us. Have you had a performing arts management background before? Well, I won't say purely performing arts, but I've worked in, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is the leisuretainment industry, having worked in uh, large licensed clubs, the casinos here in Queensland, and been responsible for their entertainment offering along the way. Fantastic. Well, you would have run into Hinksy a few times then. Oh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have an intimate knowledge of the Ipswich Civic Centre, and I just wondering, because I had my school formal there when I was in high school, did yep. you get the stones out? Oh, look, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been just after it opened in the 70s, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're looking at uh, programming, it must be very important to try and gauge what the community wants. 
Yeah, look, I think uh, as, a, as a civic centre and a performing arts venue, uh, we do have a role to play, a very important role to play in the community. Uh, so providing a very wide and, and, and varied offering is, is critical to not only our success, but also the enjoyment of the people of Ipswich and a little bit further out. Um, we're very serious about trying to attract you know, uh, the, the Western Corridor Fringe uh, residents. And, and I think um, offering uh, you know, quality productions across all genres is, is really a very, very important part of that. Now, uh, apart from uh, the centre itself, I mean, you also now have a new facility. That's uh, Studio 188. Yeah. Great little venue. Um, you know, we like to see it as that, that uh, pathway through to, to uh, larger performance venues. It's, a, it's an intimate space, about 60 to 70 people. Uh, great sound uh, facility and it's where we like to welcome very much the community based groups to refine their program, their, what they're presenting to the public, their schools or their associations uh, and also for, for those small theatre groups who uh, just love getting on stage and putting on a show for uh, their friends, families and local residents. And of course I love the facility itself because I mean it's got cutting edge, edge technology especially with lighting. Yeah it does. Um, uh, we have a great sound and lighting tech uh, manager um, he was given a brief um, and he certainly, well I'll say he over delivered on that brief and yes. we now have a, um, for a very small venue uh, a state of the art lighting sound facility. We can do some very minimal recording in as a studio uh, but the, the sound that we're able to produce um, is absolutely first class. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the new manager coming in people are always going to go, is he going to change things? Is he going to change the status quo? Uh, are you going to shake things up a little bit or...? or... Yeah, look, I think it's really important that uh, as a performing arts venue that we're, it's not just about the show. I, I, I really and I truly believe that um, I can provide an experience from the moment they arrive which is about you know an hour and a half or two before the show. We can provide a quality food and beverage experience. We can provide pre-theatre experience in terms of potentially you know, uh, walking magicians or, or, or artists or, or um, you know, comedians. Uh, well, so when you said pre-theatre, I thought drinks. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a big part of our offering. But I, I think we have an obligation as a venue to, it's, it's about providing the ultimate theatre experience, which includes pre, during, and if opportunity presents itself, post. And that could be meet and greets of the stars afterwards, over drinks, cocktails. Uh, but it's got to be first class. So, yeah. yeah, we'll shake up our food and beverage offering, I think, is a good way to look at it. Well, mate, it sounds like you've got everything under control <laughs> already. And how long have you been in the job? Uh, I've been here eight weeks, yeah. Eight <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got a long way to go, but it's been a great eight weeks. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, great we're people. Looking forward to uh, the launch of the uh, 2016 season, yep. which no doubt will be happening very shortly, and then people can book their tickets. Absolutely. We've, we're in our run to Christmas, so, you know, our last final shows through to the year, David Hobson next month, uh, Got a lot of our community groups coming through, the dance schools and the Christmas uh, shows into the new year and we, we're um, really excited about our programming uh, breadth next year. Uh, you know, Queensland Symphony Orchestra, hopefully some more ballet. Uh, some of the good old tried and tested ones. Uh, we've got uh, Grace Knight, uh, a couple of the tribute shows. So I'm really excited about what we'll be able to present to Ipswich and, and further afield next year. Well, mate, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us on the program. Thank you for having me. And if you'd like to book any shows at the Ipswich Civic Centre, uh, then you can just visit the website, itswitchciviccentre.com.au. It's also where you can sign up for their newsletter and receive the latest news and offers as well. Up next on Connected, 30 years of entertaining history. Stay with us. And welcome back to Connected. More than 14 million people can't be wrong. And that's how many have purchased tickets to shows at the Queensland Performing Arts Complex since it opened in 1985. Over 20,000 performances have taken place, with many of the world's major musicals being staged there, including Cats, A Chorus Line and The Boy From Oz. Now, one man who well no one knows the history of QPAX Museum is curator Christopher Smith, who joins us on Connected. How are you, mate? Very well, Damien. Uh, it's been a, a fantastic uh, 30 years. How uh, long have you been there? About 
27 of them. Wow, so almost from the beginning. Almost from the beginning. It was very new when I first got there, and I realise now why, because it has only been open a few years. <laughs> yes. Now, how did the whole QPAC museum start? Well, once the centre existed, uh, people found it a really good place to deposit things that they'd been left with. You know, auntie dies and you suddenly realise that she was a chorus girl at the Tivoli right. and you don't know qu quite what to do with her memorabilia. So people just started to bring things along. Uh, and then for the first 10 years of QPAC, it was a relatively informal collection. It was catalogued, it was looked after. And then on our 10th birthday in 1995, uh, the state government recognised that it was a significant connection collection. So we are celebrating our 20th anniversary while QPAC celebrates their 30th. That's amazing. Now, of course, you brought some uh, I, pieces in today as well to have a little look at. I did. I brought a few pieces of footwear because very often theatre is about treading the boards, putting your best foot forward. So I thought I'd um, just grab a few items from the collection. Uh, for instance, we have here, this is actually a shoe from the last production of Les Miserables that was here. Right. Uh, Madame Thénardier, when she's rich, obviously rich. Oh, yes, yes, um, the master of the house. Yes, absolutely. What was we, she doing with the back of the shoe? Look at this. Oh, I, I'm obviously not good on chairs. <laughs> 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 then we have a foot that got left behind. Uh, this is the Wicked Witch of the East. She's the one the house drops on. Oh, yes, yes. So, the ruby slippers before Dorothy gets to steal them. Right. <laughs> uh, then for ballet aficionados, we have something from the Bolshoi, from their recent trip. Yep. From the American Ballet Theatre. And then from a slightly earlier period, we have Humphrey B. Mayer. Now, I, I, I saw that and I thought, man, that is amazing. Uh, that it had to be one very big-footed ballet uh, dancer. <laughs> <laughs> or it was a character <laughs> one. There's another yep. point. <laughs> uh, oh, that would be deadly, deadly. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have a couple of pieces from the 1998 production of Marriage of Figaro, which opened the Playhouse. So we have Robin Nevin and we have Geoffrey Rush. Right. So he played Figaro in that production. So this is one of his shoes. We have the costume that he wore and Robin Nevin wore in that production. So Geoffrey Rush is now walking around with one shoe. <laughs> I know. Well, he's a pirate. He doesn't need two shoes, does he? Yeah, you've got he? a point. You've got a, you've got a very good and point And he doesn't there. look like he has a very big foot. Hang on, let me have a look here. Oh. Oh dear, here we go. We, I mean, we knew you'd have oh, to go. Look at that. There. Claim to fame. The same. Same size. Look at that. I could win an Oscar. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For be best footwear. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had talent. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, what's the main aim of the, the QPAC collection now? Well, it's twofold. One of the things we do is we document the production history of QPAC itself, so things that have happened in the last 30 years. But a, an also, a big part of it is also the heritage collection, and we collect and we document activity throughout Queensland. So if it's a Queensland production or it features a Queensland artist, we like to have something f about it in the collection. So we're documenting the whole performing arts life of the state, not just Brisbane and QPAC. Right. So we have, the, I think the earliest item goes back to the 1880s, um, and we're not, we're not so um, fussy that we won't include someone if they end up working elsewhere, but they have to have a strong association. So we've got a wonderful collection of career memorabilia of Bill Brown, who, of course, of course. Queensland boy who died a few years ago, tragically way too young. But we have things like um, his first contract with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Oh, wow. So things about the, the, um, the history of Queensland performing arts and I think we try to collect as broadly as possible, as many art forms as possible, and also regionally, because it's really important. A lot goes on in this state that's not in Brisbane. Yes. So we have material from Mackay and Ken Cairns and Townsville, Rockhampton, Maryborough. Recently we got a donation um, of a whole lot of material from a, a man in Maryborough who collected touring shows for a long, long time and was a bit of a performer himself. That his collections just recently come to us. So we try and recognise that uh, the Queensland is a very big state and a very busy state in the performing arts. Now, of course, you have been uh, using a lot of the collection in exhibits that you open to the public. We certainly do. Um, do you have a favourite exhibit that you've put together? Oh, well, we've just closed the QPAC 30 exhibition, which was like a, a cabinet of curiosities with sampling from the last 30 years. But we've just put in a fabulous exhibition looking at the making of Les Miserables. So looking at the last... Because it celebrated 30 years as well. It opened 30 years ago in London. Oh, it's Extraordinary. Amazing. So we've been able to borrow material from their archive in London to show how that show was created 30 years ago 
and is still being seen around the world. So, look, everyone's your favourite. It's like having children. You can't have a favourite <laughs> child. I'd and like to make a donation, though, for the For, the for children or no, something for the, for the museum? Yeah, for, oh, the, right. for the museum, you know. It's something that's been uh, around in theatre for a long time. Just Damien. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we can find a, a case or something for you. <laughs> need to be a big case. Let me oh, tell you. that's fine. <laughs> we, we can accommodate large and small. Oh, good. Well, of course, uh, as you said, the current exhibit is on now, so people should get along and see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, mate, uh, thank you so much for bringing some of these wonderful uh, historical items in from uh, Queensland's entertainment industry. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, you can get along to see all of these wonderful things at the QPAC Museum. It's open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and admission is free. Coming up on Connected, indie music from Matt Breen, direct from the home of the Beatles. And welcome back to Connected. Well, Matt Breen hails from Liverpool in the UK and is a 20-year-old singer-songwriter, a popular regular on the Liverpool, Merseyside and Chester UK gig circuit. Matt has appeared regularly at the world-famous Cavern Club in Liverpool and is currently, currently on his second tour of Queensland. And I'm very pleased to say he joins us on the Connected Couch. How are you, mate? I'm great. How are you? And welcome back to Australia. Cheers. Thanks very much. I'm glad you let me in. <laughs> well, <laughs> last year the tour went exceptionally well, didn't it? Oh, it went really well. It was great. You know, we just kind of went up to Rockhampton for a little bit and came back down and recorded a couple of songs as well, got the album going. Yeah. It was all good. And you recorded uh, a video clip, I think, at uh, old, the old Bogger Road. Oh Jail. yeah, we did. Yeah, that was that was amazing. That was an experience. Yeah. Very, um, uh, very European. I found it was very sort of traditional in terms of prisons, because obviously there's plenty in England. Yeah, well, so. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no cameos from any of the ghosts at the jail. Oh no. Well, you see, I'm I'm really into paranormal, so I was kind of walking around. Hello, no, no, nothing. You know, it was middle of the day. They yeah, please, you even going so. hello? Is it me you're looking for? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks so much for that. <laughs> uh, people are certainly taking to your music and also to your online presence because uh, you've had uh, something like three quarters of a million hits. Oh no, it's it's all it's all gone off. You see, I did a I did a gig on Sunday up in um, Shorncliffe, and I didn't have my phone on me all day. Did the gig, went home, and then slept. And I woke up by my manager in the morning, and he said, "You've gone viral." I was like, no, "It was nine o'clock in the morning." I was like, "No, <laughs> this time." And, um, and then I've checked online about 50 odd notifications. I was like, God, this has really took off, you know? Yeah. And I, initially it was the Daily Mirror, which is a paper in England. And then it was the, the Daily Mail. And then local newspapers started picking it up, the Liverpool Echo. And it's all gone a bit crazy. And now loads of social media sites with millions of followers have started sharing it. And, with, and this is because you were singing with a police officer at the airport. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. The, the, this guy just turned up behind me. I was playing Benny and the Jets oh, yes. on this piano. It was an open piano. I was playing Benny and the Jets, and I turned around, could feel someone behind me. I was, you know, God gave me a fright, you know. I was like, what have I done here, you know? Yeah. I thought they were going to take me off somewhere, and he was like, oh, I just want to sing with you. So, <laughs> As you do. Yeah, and then so he requested some, some Manchester band that I'd never heard of, and I was like, well, what about Oasis? And he went, yeah, go on, yeah. So we started playing Don't Look Back in Anger. And he was really like, oh, this is, you know, this is great. And he was singing along, belting it out. And about 10 people filmed it and now, and now I've gone viral. Crazy, isn't it? You don't even need the shot at the end. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, of course, uh, for you, I mean, uh, you know, playing places like the Cavern Nightclub mm. must be fantastic being from Liverpool itself. Oh, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it, the thing is, with, with people in Liverpool, the whole Beatles thing, unfortunately, has been done to death. So loads of scousers will go, oh, the, the, it's just the cavern, like, you know, I swear that place, I'll go somewhere else. But the thing is, as a musician, you know, and someone who knows popular culture, the cavern's the place to be. Mm. You know, it's just this, this kind of vibe around it, and you, you go in there, you do your thing. I mean, the ceiling's dead small, and obviously I'm really tall, so I'm kind of like that playing. You know? <laughs> but um, it's, it's, um, it's such a wonderful vibe in there, you know. Uh, they just always play Beatles music. But you, you say that the Beatles thing, you know, has sort of been done to death, mm. but I mean, you were actually in a show that was about the Beatles I too. was, yeah. I was in Lennon the Musical playing uh, George Harrison. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I was, um, I, it was very strange really because George is the short one. So I kind of had to bend down and duck down behind Paul, who was about up to here on me, <laughs> right. and John, who was up to there on me. So <laughs> I was kind of like skulking in the back. <laughs> you know, 
stealing the limelight every now and again, but you know, yeah, it was great. But great show. acclaim for that show too, didn't you? Oh yeah, well yeah. you know, got several good reviews, you see, and um, it was wonderful. It was just a wonderful experience. I got in touch with a, a guy who was in um, a band called The Lars, which are a Liverpool band. They wrote a song called There She Goes. Yeah. You might know that, yeah. and. Um, I've got in touch with him and I've been in touch with him since. He's a really lovely guy, John yeah. Power. And um, yeah, it's just opened doors, really. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Well, we're glad you are here. Thank you, thank and uh, we might actually get you to play uh, a, the new single for us. Yeah, sure, of course. So if you'd like to make your way over to yeah, our sure. production set there. No worries. Uh, we spare no expense here, mate. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll listen to you yeah. in a second. And if you'd like to know more about Matt, you can check out his website, matthewbreen.co.uk. And to give you an insight into why he is so popular, here he is with Not Guilty. This is Matt Breen. So I'm picking up the pieces And I'm trying to get them fixed But when I think I'm done It seems there's a few I've missed Before the jury give the verdict Will you just hear me out When I say I'm sure I never really had a doubt So let the courtroom be adjourned and your objections overturned Cause the fire you've been burning is just burnt out So I hear you while I'm saying And I read my words clear And I'll get all I'm wanting So I have no fear And I lie and I'm crying I'm begging you please Do I have to get down on my knees You're all that means to me So can you see That I'm not guilty And those ashes, they turn to dust Or do you have to leave, baby? Well, if you must So let the moment be adjourned And your objections overturned Cause the fire you've been burning is just burnt out So I hear you what I'm saying And I read my words clear You know you're all I'm wanting So I've no fear Yeah, I'm not lying, I'm crying I'm begging you, please or Do I have to get down? I'm not guilty Fantastic, isn't it? Matt Breen there, joining us again here on Connected. And if you'd like uh, more information about Matt, check out his website, matthewbreen.co.uk. That's all the time we have on this edition of Connected. Thanks to Don Stewart from the Institute Civic Centre, Christopher Smith from QPAC, and, of course, Matt Breen. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.